The 2009 draft produced so much exceptional talent, many of the players had an iconic impact on the league. From Blake Griffin's athleticism and dunks, to James Harden's rise to stardom, to Steph Curry's threes, to Tyreek Evans winning Rookie of the Year and then falling off the face of the earth. What's been lost in all of these success stories was the failure of the second overall pick, Hashim Thabit. He was quite the anomaly for the second pick because, well, he wasn't really that impressive before the draft anyway. His high draft position was mainly based on projection. Not only that, but he was an older rookie, getting drafted at 22 years old, so he was theoretically more experienced and more NBA ready compared to his peers, and he was expected to produce right away. None of those things happened. Anyway, how's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's talk about Hashim Thabit the long-forgotten bust drafted right between Griffin and Harden. Yet, it was obvious that his NBA career was over shortly after it started. Why did he fail so badly? And why did he get drafted that high to begin with, despite not showing much, honestly? But before we start, I'd like to give a shout-out to my sponsor, Grammarly. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that helps over 30 million people write clearly and more effectively every day. You can use it on many different platforms, like there's a desktop version, an extension for Microsoft Office, it's on the App Store and Play Store, and there's even a browser extension. Here, you can download it from the Chrome Web Store and use it on any website. If you need to write an essay for class, or if you're writing a resume to look for jobs, Grammarly is the perfect tool to assist you. It helps you expand your vocabulary and replaces boring words with more exciting, more sophisticated ones as well as cutting out unnecessary words to make your sentences more clear and concise. And check this out, my favorite part, the tone detector. It checks the tone of your writing to make sure you're not sounding too aggressive or negative. There's a free version with basic grammar and word suggestions, but also a premium version, where you can get much more detailed feedback for your writing. If you're interested, go to Grammarly.com slash AndyHoops to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium. Thank you again for sponsoring, and without further ado, let's get started. Thabit's story starts in Tanzania. As a young kid, he really had no interest in basketball. In fact, he didn't start playing basketball at all until the age of 15, where he slowly gained interest while watching local games in the park. Fortunately for him, he was also blessed with incredible genetics, being nearly 7 foot tall as a teenager. Eventually, he'd grow to 7 foot 3, and combined with his sheer size, he looked like an absolute monster. There were plenty of NBA scouts in Tanzania trying to look around for players who could become future NBA prospects. The beat's sheer size and mass caught their attention, even though he wasn't that psyched about basketball in the first place. The scouts were basically like, hey you, you look like you could be good at basketball, and then took him under their wing. Initially, he wasn't that excited about it. However, for him and his family, this was the way out. If he wanted to move to America and create a better life for himself, this was the chance he needed. He knew that. So Thabit agreed to attend high school in the States, where he got flooded with people trying to train him and turn him into an NBA caliber player. There were a lot of eyes watching. Oh, they knew, just by looking at him, he had the potential to dominate in the NBA. But maybe they shouldn't judge someone just by the way they look. In three years at UConn, there's no denying that Thabit was a defensive powerhouse. He was named the Big East Defensive Player of the Year twice. He averaged a ridiculous number of blocks, and overall, that's where he made the most impact. Unfortunately, there were concerns about his offensive game. While he was efficient, the majority of his points came from catch-and-finish opportunities, usually from cuts or offensive rebounds. That was mainly because he was simply taller and stronger than everyone. But when it comes to finesse and footwork, he never had much of it. A few months prior to the draft, a scouting report written by Matt Williams of Draft Express explained his thoughts on Hashim Thabit. Thabit struggles badly trying to create opportunities for himself, 
being incredibly reliant on the talent and generosity of his teammates to generate offense for him. It's more than a bit concerning that the beat was already having trouble making his presence felt on the offensive end on the NCAA level, however efficient he may have been. He was, after all, essentially a giant in a land of midgets. He won't have anywhere near as big a physical advantage in the NBA as he did in college, which will make things even more difficult on him moving forward. Turns out, he was right. In the 2009 draft, Memphis held the number 2 pick and selected Hashim Thabit. In hindsight, you'd probably think this was a strange pick. I mean, why would a team that already has Zach Randolph and Marc Gasol choose another big man? Well, at that time, Marc Gasol was still a question mark, and we didn't know he'd develop into such a good player. Plus, they already had Rudy Gay and OJ Mayo, both 22, 23 years old, showing some pretty good signs of talent so they thought they were set at those positions. Also, the next best prospects of the draft were all guards or wing players, so they felt they didn't need someone like James Harden, or Tyreek Evans, or Steph Curry, or DeMar DeRozan, when they already had Gay, Mayo, and Conley, who were projected to be future stars at those positions. With that being said, Thabit was still believed to be a top 3 talent in the class regardless, due to his defensive ability and presence in the paint. Most NBA scouts and executives still believed Memphis had some inclinations of possibly taking Harden instead, but decided fairly quickly against that and took the beat. So, uh, yeah, that was a mistake. Nevertheless, like I said earlier, it was very clear from the beginning that Thabit was not an NBA caliber player. I've never seen somebody be labeled a bust so early into their NBA careers, but even as a rookie, there was no hope for him. While the Grizzlies, as a team, were making massive strides, improving and returning back to the playoffs, Thabit had no part in that. Despite being known for his defensive instincts, the issue was, Thabit really did not know how to defend at the NBA level. Per 36 minutes, he averaged over 6 fouls per game. That's… that's pretty damn bad. Hence why, he could not play more minutes, even if he wanted to. He would just foul out. Thabit lasted about a season and a half in Memphis, where he sparingly played, and when he did, he was a foul machine. Now, maybe if he was 19 years old, the Grizzlies would be more patient with him, but he's not. He was an older rookie, so he was supposed to contribute right away, but instead, he looked completely lost on the court. Now, I know there's been other players who started playing basketball much later in their lives, and they've seen success. Hakeem Olajuwon, Joel Embiid, and Pascal Siakam come to mind. But those are the exceptions, not the norm. For most players, they end up like the beat, someone who heavily relied on his size to dominate the lower ranks, but he's always had very little basketball instinct. Despite having the physical tools, he just didn't have the knowledge of the game to know what to do in different situations on the floor. It comes naturally to some people, especially those who've played for their entire lives. For the beat, basketball was always a one-way ticket to getting rich. Soon, the Grizzlies found no need for him, but that rookie season would actually be the most productive year of his NBA career. His 3 points and 3.6 rebounds and 1.3 blocks would all be career highs. Anyway, the beat bounced around the league a few times, playing for Houston, OKC, and Portland, but he was never anything more than a fringe bench player, if that. Mostly, he was just warming the bench. By 2014, he played in what looks like to be his final NBA game. Afterwards, he played overseas a bit, played in the G League a little bit, but I think it's set in stone that his NBA career is done. Thabit's failure of a career is, in a way, intriguing. You can point to his lack of guidance early on, especially in Memphis, at a time where their roster was still very young and Zach Randolph was still finding himself. Because of that, Thabit really didn't have anyone to look up to. In an interview from 2019, Tony Allen stated, The thing about Hashim was, I don't think he had a good mentor. Nobody mentored him. 
Thabit confirmed that and added on, he didn't have much guidance until years later, when he found himself in OKC. Quote, by my fifth year, when I was playing in OKC with Karam Butler, Derek Fisher, Kevin Martin, those were the vets that took me in and actually taught me something. If he had the chance to get drafted to another organization, maybe his career would be different, but probably not by much. Also, if the Grizzlies took Harden instead? They were always dark horse contenders for a few years in the West, but with Harden? They might have won a championship or two. He was exactly the player they needed, that extra firepower on offense, especially at the shooting guard position. During those years, they desperately needed someone like him. Unfortunately, that's just a massive what-if scenario. With that being said, Thabit is still not over how his career ended. When asked about how he felt about his NBA career being so short and unfulfilled, he responded, It's just that I was very limited with my time spent on the court. I need that chance, and I need to get back out there. That's how I feel. One thing's for sure though, Thabit is now a multi-millionaire. He accomplished what he set out to do, and that was to help his family. So at the end of the day, his life was still a success. That's all folks, thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. What are your thoughts on how Thabit's career played out? Do you think there was any hope for him to begin with? Or was it just bad scouting and he wasn't fit for the NBA regardless? I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.